Hello. Today, we will talk about how a workflow orchestration solution can speed innovation and that in SaaS. I am your presenter, Xavier Janakopoulos from the solutions marketing team. And uh, my colleague, Alon Leventhal, will follow your question and remarks on the chat. So welcome. and innovation, which is, if you want, in some sense, the evolution of a joint play between people, the one that collaborate to build value, to find new solution to problems. And on the other side, outcomes, the one that represent the value delivered during the process. Then in the middle, you have applications, a lot of data, and the infrastructure it runs on. And uh, in fact, innovation will be strongly determined by the enabling role of IT from people to outcome and the way it will aid and sustain human creativity. Now, let me come to an, uh, a challenge which is so important into modernization and innovation. That is the need to automate. Because without automation, every piece of work is not scalable. Every piece cannot be optimized. And then there is a disproportion in the sense that the, uh, without automation, work requires a never growing pool of person. But automation can have several meanings. For the data engineering team, automation means that the data pipelines can be organized to start on their own and nicely execute to the final result and, and, and get the value out of it. For cloud engineering, you know what's happened is business applications that run on multiple clouds and also with the part on premise, with the part on the cloud, they are the norm today and, and they sprawl. So automation helps to cope with complexity and affords cloud engineering to move their attention to another topic without having to have four pairs of eyes. Automation also plays an important role in the SRE method. And in fact, automation in the cloud is really, uh, uh, has seen an increase of activity and of interest. And finally, for IT operations, automation means to be able to use those deep operational capabilities that allow in production to deliver and make sure that all these business processes execute within SLA, within the required uh, quality and timing, and with strict constraints of efficiency. So they must run with low need for watching, no, lead, no need for intervention. Another thing is for IT operations. Automation also means the possibility to organize DevOps better without needing to put special strength, stringent rules or complicated procedures or things that stifle creativity. So for all these roles, speed and ease are the key factor. And that's the reason why we have designed our automation solution on SaaS, Helix Control M, with speed in mind at every level. Speed is there when you start with the solution, when you get your tenant delivered, that's within a day, and you can install agents in minutes or even automatically. Speed is when you can map your business processes into workflows and integrate many applications out of the box, then refine those description with SLA, recovery procedures, alerting. And this includes, of course, the data pipelines. Speed is also when you get a clear picture of what is the current situation in production. You know when there is a problem, you can decide if and where to intervene, and you have suggestions with insights about what to do, and you can do it right, right away uh, up to a certain point in the interface. Speed is also there 
when there is increased engagement and collaboration across the team so that uh, between development and operation with some base rules enforced the you can give the freedom to the user to do the rest so let's see a little bit more in detail what this means about the solution and what speed means first um I don't want to spend much time about the uh, architecture, but I mean, it's good to know that uh, we collaborate with AWS. And um, thanks to this, we, we believe we have created a world-class SaaS solution because we took advantage of their massive experience in terms of cloud providing. That's especially true in terms of security and protection. But, um, the solution is uh, is so uh, hosted on uh, one tenant, one part AWS US West. We are uh, using availability zones, and we have this system for the agents. And keep in mind that the agents can be anywhere. So the fact that we are centrally hosted on AWS does not mean that you will have a problem uh, running workload on. Google Cloud or on Azure or on premise for that. For us, it's all the same. The system is absolutely generic. But what's more interesting for you is probably the qualities of the service. Thanks to this architecture, the resulting service is, is really nimble and, and robust. So we have an SLA of 99.95 availability for the service itself. And um, should something happen, we have a trust page that is a web page we give to you that allows you to check the results, the, the, the availability of the service live whenever you want with the browser or to integrate it with your own alerting system. And we provide the hooks to uh, integrate with, I mean, all the most common alerting system. We have a dedicated support team that uh, allow to honor the excellent uh, BMC uh, support SLA. And uh, in terms of the upgrades, BMC takes care of the central upgrade. And with three weeks notice, we will yet let you know when the system will be upgraded. Customers are responsible for upgrading the agents. And that means that you have um, 18 months to, to upgrade the agent at your rhythm and with a, a guaranteed compatibility. So that's about the qualities of the service. Let's see now about how it is built and what are the main characteristics. <clears throat> the first is the plan. That's where most of the customers spend their time because that's where the modeling of the business workflow happen in a drag and drop manner. That is, you take normalized pieces and you build the flow. <clears throat> and then you can, with these individual actions, you can link them and enrich them with conditions about time, sequence, resource, calendar, SLAs, alerting. And all these will finally build a precise asset of what you want to run in production. And this asset can be manipulated through export, import in a JSON format to do all the tests and production standards and, and apply these as those definitions get promoted along the chain until they pass into production. We also have a part dedicated to create credential handling and storing. And so the password token lifecycle is detached from the part of, of uh, managing these flows. They can be managed according to another lifecycle, uh, which is more dedicated to the admins that uh, handle those tokens and password. And um, an important topic is about the integration with applications. So, of course, we have felt since years the need to cover out of the box a lot of application that might need to be controlled and automated. And this can be 
data processing application, can be uh, cloud services. So we have a lot of them and we have a framework that allows to add new um, blocks, new what we call them plugins, so that we have a team that continuously every month is publishing a couple of uh, such, a, such integrations according to the market needs. And you as a customer, you also have the possibility to add more. It means that the designer of the flow does not need to uh, know what is Databricks or how Informatica works. For the designer of a flow, it's a standard block with small uh, few variables to be set, and then it can be replicated, copied, and, and propagated uh, towards production. Think about what change this brings in the distribution of skills also and the distribution of specialists. So now that's for the modeling part. <clears throat> Once the modeling is done, it's all an exception game. That is 99.8% of the time at our customers, things run autonomously. And the solution alerts in case of unexpected issues and the monitoring part gives overviews and the possibility to drill down to the source of the problem and to resolve it. Of course, always on the web UI. And this is especially true for SLAs, for service level agreement. That's where missed delivery can be associated with huge penalties. And in fact, we are able to calculate what is the forward risk and estimate what is the impact? So now, when you see this equity process fail, we can tell it's not that important because that process is not on the critical path. Whereas if this other job in yellow is delayed, is taking too long, this could delay the SLA. So you would like to intervene. So. In the end, we do this risk calculation so that the final user does not have to do it and operations get a predictive early warning and have more slack time to intervene. Globally, this also encourages operations to consider what is more important to the business. Also, another topic that requires special attention is the transfer of data across component of the IT. We believe that this transfer topic needs a process view, a process view that integrates data movements along with other automation pieces. And um, with that, we provide a meaningful and accurate description because when you look at this, you know how things are going, you know if a file is delayed, if it's too big, if it's too slow, but you also know why data is being transferred thanks to the presence of this transfer inside a larger flow. And this is done across on premises and cloud. And in fact, um, you can see at the bottom that we integrate with the major uh, cloud storage providers, all the big three. And uh, we provide also, we track closely the kind of authentication model that they take in order to load an S3 bucket or, or an Azure, um, uh, an Azure data, data lake. The next topic is collaboration. That's the third topic to which automation accelerates business. And on that regard, Helix Control M delivers this collaboration function through three parts. One is to enhance the UI so as to make it clear what is the role of the person and what are the tools that they need immediately at hand in order to fulfill that role. A second part is dedicated for developers. There we provide a continuously updated uh, set of APIs to improve the developer experience, a base framework that they can install on the local machine and try out the code and the Python library to manipulate our objects and also an extension library to create new plugins. 
The third part is a framework for collaboration and that is done through the way user rights are assigned or delegated and the way some boundaries are fixed so that users cannot create all they want, cannot name their objects as they exactly as they want and cannot use some details of the, of the jobs, especially linked to security. So that with these base rules, the teams are free to go and build their own constructs, but they, the whole situation keeps manageable and, and keeps uh, sound. And this framework for collaboration and control is especially visible in the interfaces we provide. So on the left, you can see the code view. Everything that uh, you manipulate through the interface has a JSON aspect, has a JSON version to which you can manipulate exactly the same object. So this allows a strong collaboration from between the developer part and the operations and production part. In the middle, you have a web UI with an image of uh, uh, how we represent building and monitoring flows that execute. And that's a detailed interface where you can exactly understand what is happening and what part of the workflow has been doing as expected. And finally, there is a simplified business view to deliver a high level view color coded with only the base, uh, the, the basic SLA timing and uh, is it good or is it bad for the uncomplicated user that wants to know what is the, the end result and how is the, how is the, the progress. So these interfaces are the ones that are dedicated to the roles. Of course, we also cover the topic of uh, a tight integration between the automation process and the DevOps part of the house. That is the capability to bring those automation along in the continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. And this is key to, to improve the productivity of developer team. And with the APIs, organization can take jobs as code approach and they can describe those automation as code, as text, as we have seen in the, in the previous slide. With the rules of site standards, there, there are less surprises and more predictability because the boundary are clearly set. And then finally, the developer using import and export can version their asset and they can be integrated into whatever version code, version coding uh, that is, uh, uh, that is uh, needed. Finally, for those who like to change fast, we provide an automated pipeline that can take already created definition for automation in other tools like Windows Sheller or Unix Cron or standard competitors and allow to transform those definitions directly into definition that you can load into the tool. It means that right after the creation of a tenant, you can start populating it with the content of the previous solution. And in fact, you know, I mean, with this speed, what we have seen happening with uh, several of our customers is that the technology gets out of the way into the project and the organizational aspects become prevalent. We had this case where at the end of a, of a project, the team had to wait for months for the final team for the final application team to give the sign off to transform the loads, load them into Helix Control M and activate them and um, take out the previous tool. And that's good because, I mean, the organizational, we cannot help on the organizational issue, but we can provide the tools so that they are simple, well described, and so that it works. So overall, what you have seen today is a high level overview of Hilux uh, Control M. And if you have a more detailed interest, or if you want to see it in action, please get in touch, 
at HTPS, bmc.com, IT solution, BMC Helix Control M. So uh, you take bmc.com products Helix Control M. And with that, thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, I believe we have uh, time for some question. I have seen a question on the uh, chat. So let me take them in order. First question, are all the Control M on-premise item available with Helix Control M, such as archiving, forecast, batch impact manager, MFT, links to on-premise Control M agent, Control M for ZOS, etc.? The question, the, the answer is, um, there is a good part of the function that are available, uh, of course, the core, all the core part are available. MFT is available. Um, so some of the function are practically identical. Some of the function are, let's say, reduced to a synthesis to uh, their core part. That's the case, for instance, of the batch impact manager. The SLA system in Helix is the same system as Batch Impact Manager, but it does not have all the function and all the, the detailed feature of the Batch Impact Manager. Um, it is an essential version of it, which we are planning to progressively, we will consider improving it and, and getting closer to the, to the um, on-prem um, part. And then finally, there are parts that are not there. Archiving is not there. Contact with the mainframe is not there. Um, we are continuously evaluating this. And I strongly encourage you to follow the roadmap uh, later, which will definitely give you some more insight on that. Question two. You see Control M and Helix Control M coexist for a long time, or rather converge in one product. That's a very good question about, it's a question about the market. And um, in fact, I, uh, we believe that they will coexist for a long time because not all the scenarios that we see in the market can be or, or are meaningful to be ported into uh, the cloud, into the SaaS service, especially because we cover a situation that run from the small shop that runs 300 jobs a day up to the global enterprise that runs 100,000 jobs a day. And dedicating the same tool to solve all this situation is hard. I mean, presents some serious difficulties. And we'd rather continue to uh, cover the market with this uh, combination of tools improving the combination, improving the choices, but uh, keep them uh, coexisting for, for a long time. Third question. Did I hear correctly that to continue to have Helix Control M support, that all Control M agents need to be updated within 18 months following any release patch? Yes. Is that the problem? I mean, please intervene because we believe the, the agent upgrade is really a simple operation. So now, of course, I mean, I understand your, your concern might be about the support for uh, older platforms, and we are considering this, uh, this problem, and we will bring an answer to it. But I mean, in terms of, I mean, I hope it's not a problem of finding the time, because I mean, I've upgraded agent, and I'm not that technical. And it's really simple. Question four, how is Helix Control M interoperable with the wider BMC Helix service and operation management portfolio? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a great question. We are currently providing some hooks and improving the uh, capability to, to link the two. Uh, this is something that we continuously are going to work on and, uh, and improve now that both of the product in Helix are seeing a ramp up uh, in, their, in their customer base. And we see this question coming more, more and more frequently. Next question. <laughs> what is your key takeaway of this session? The ones that attendees should take. 
Well, I wanted to organize this session around the concept of, of speed. And in order to tell that Helix Control M is a modern solution that is absolutely fit for the situation that we hear from customers today in the field, in the cloud, in the modern evolution that IT is doing at, at a high pace. And uh, if you get the feeling that this is a solution that you can take, activate, and then you're free to go, then I think you have taken the big, uh, the, the, you have understood the key takeaway. So it's a solution take and forget if you want. Uh, I think we do have maybe some time for any further question. Oh. I've been too quick, that speed. <laughs> um, Alon, uh, if there are, if there is no further activity in the in the chat on the platform, which I cannot see. Um, please, if you can post a message and um, we will end the session. Okay, I take it as a no. So it's been great to be able to uh, present you with this solution. Uh, we're seeing a lot of traction in the market and we hope you will be potentially interested. And uh, so I said, don't hesitate to give us a signal. Um, we we can demonstrate the value of the solution. We can adapt to your scenario. Uh, as I said, the organizational aspects and the security and compliance aspects are the thing that we see as uh, the, the, the place where um, our customer and prospects are spending most of the time. That is normal. We have a good practice to answer and to find the questions. And um, well, I mean, looking forward to see you as customer and enhanced customer for our already existing customer, which I take the occasion to, to greet. And with that, I'd like to pass back to operations. Mm -hmm.